The Forge of Light of event is upon us in Call of Dragons, and I am going to tell you whether or not you should participate. Welcome to the channel everyone, my name is Phoenix and today we are going to be looking at the Forge of Light event. Um, great artifacts were, were picked for the Forge of Light this week. Um, I'm really excited about them, although I will not be participating this week. And I'm going to explain why um, in just a minute, but first let's take a look at what artifacts were chosen for this Forge of Light event. Um, so the first one is the Dragon Scale Armor. So the Dragon Scale Armor is probably the best infantry um, artifact that is out there currently, especially if you are going to be using Madeline. Um, this is made for Madeline. I wouldn't suggest it um, as my first choice uh, unless I am running Madeline uh, as your primary. Um, and the reason is, is so it gives HP, which is always great, right? So you, you always want to have uh, higher HP, especially for the infantry. It makes you really tanky. It's going to make you survive a lot longer in the front of the battle. Um, which is really your goal. You can be surrounded and you can take a lot of hits and be fine. Uh, so let's take a look at what the skill does. So if we go ahead and put this at max, a low rage cost. I mean, 400, that's really low. That's really, really great. Um, and it's going to grant you a boon shield. And it's also going to grant Keen to three friendly legions in the designated circle. Uh, so that's really awesome. So it's going to give attack bonus to those that are around you. And it's also going to give you a shield. So the shield is 4,500 for 10 seconds. That is a ton. That shield factor is very high. Um, and I think that with it lasting for 10 seconds, I wouldn't be surprised if it does last for 10 seconds. Um, I think you're going to be able to take a lot of damage, um, especially if you're if you're running Madeline um, and you have a troop advantage. I mean, this is going to be an amazing, amazing artifact for you. Um, it also gives the 10% for 10 seconds. You know, 10% isn't a ton, but it's also not a slouch either. Um, I find that any damage is always great, and I think the 10% damage, especially to something like Calvary, um, can really do some damage in the front line. Now, if it's just buffing 10% to, let's say, other tanks, uh, that's not going to do as well. Um, but I definitely, definitely think that the 10% is a nice added buff to this artifact. But beyond that, its passive ability is awesome. Your Legion gains range resistance when the, when the wielder gains a shield through rage skills. So this is interesting, right? So does this proc from the artifact itself. I'm not sure if it does. Um, it's something that I would be very interested to test. But this is where it um, works great with Madeline. This is where that partnership matters because her rage skill grants her a buff, which is this then going to give her minus 18% for five seconds of ranged damage reduction. So not only are you getting a shield, so you're going to absorb more damage, you're also going to reduce the damage from rain units. You're going to grant other people attack. I mean, this is a great tanky artifact. Now, the reason that I may not go ahead and pull in this event is because I am using the Dragon Rift, which is the attack infantry, and I really, really love... Um, that artifact, especially because I didn't go to a tanky build. I went for the infantry side with the counterattack and I'm currently pairing with Nika. If you are planning to pair with Garwood and really tank, um, then I highly recommend the Dragon Scale Armor. If you are going to use anyone other than Madeline, I would highly recommend skipping this. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why. Um, so if we look at the other artifact in the wish list, um, the Visions of the Sanctus, it's a good artifact, but it is very tailored, right? So it's meant for a flying unit. So you're really only looking at Thea, maybe Atheist, but really Thea is the one that um, you would put this on because Thea is a very tanky hero. Um, and getting that extra defense can help. Uh, Thea gives you shields and that survivability. Um, so this is where this would kind of be the right partner. 
personally, I don't think that I would use this as my wish because let's be honest. I mean, how many people are running Thea as their primary hero? Um, I think that right now she is much better as a deputy than she is at a primary. So I, I wouldn't use this one as my wish. Would I be okay if this is what I pulled? Yes, but it's again, not my first choice. Um, so the next thing we want to consider anytime we're doing this event is what are we, you know, what are we gonna gain if we don't get these, right? Because the way the wish system works is you will automatically get your artifact that you wish for on the third legendary artifact pulled no matter what. Okay, so let me explain. You could pull it on the very first legendary you pull and none of your wish goes through and it just stays zero out of two, okay? If you were to pull a different legendary, your counter will go to one. If you pull a different legendary again, your counter goes to two and then the very next legendary you pull will be the one that you wish for. And you can see that this um, in the blessings wish instructions about how that works. So you may end up having to pull 270 times before you get this specific artifact. That's very important to understand. If we actually go to the probability chart here, it shows you which artifacts are here that can be pulled and I think that should really influence your decision in this. So for instance, you know, you have your dragon scale armor, that's your wish. You have the Sanctus, which is your wish again. But if you look at your legendaries, I'm just not super impressed with what they have here. Um, in fact, to me, the only great one here is the Kingslayer. Um, it, it, that is an amazing Calvary artifact if you pull the Kingslayer more power to you. It is devastating with cavalry, especially um, if you're in the heat of battle and you know they're trying to retreat. You can wipe out your enemies because um, anything less than 10%, you wipe them out if you use your, your King Slayer. So that's that's an awesome artifact to have. But the rest of these, are, they're just underwhelming to me. Storm Arrows, it, it's great for a cavalry attack, but I, I don't really care for the, the teleport. Um, I think that it can be useful, but I think that it is not the best. The Kingslayer would automatically go above this. Um, I, I really think that this one is nice if you are trying to get away really fast. Um, maybe you are going to farm gatherers, but you don't you don't need this one. You could pull this from a regular artifact and you know you'd use it sparingly. Um, so not really my favorite. If you look at um, Karita's Wrath, peacekeeping damage, yeah, that's great. If you're going to go farm Darklings and, you know, listen, you don't need this one at all either because you can get attack damage on any of your other artifacts and surpass this pe peacekeeping damage. Um, you know, it gives a buff to 10 friendly legions uh, so they can do more damage to dark creatures. I, again, it's it's not great. If you're going to go farm patrols, yeah, you know, throw it on. But it's not something I ever use. I do have one. I have it at level 34. Um, you know, but it's not something I use very often. I did in the beginning when I was, you know, still at the lower stages of troops. But once you get to tier 4, I, I just feel like it's not that great of a artifact. The next one, Ancient Tree Roots. I really don't like this one at all. Um, it teleports you to a random unmanned high-level resource center within Rage. Um, I, I guess that's nice if you want to gather something that's close and not march there. I, I don't know. And the Legion load capacity, I mean, that's nice. You can take less troops. But again, you're going to have so many troops that this is... This really isn't a great artifact. In fact, to me, it's one of my bottom artifacts out of all of them. I just don't think that as a gathering artifact, it's really not bringing much to the table. Having less load capacity is not that big of a deal when you can just send a little bit more troops. I mean, you're going to have so many. Maybe early game, this could be nice when you're first 
uh, starting out because you don't have as many troops, but really not that great of an artifact. Um, Blood Bay Banner is good because it's got Rally in it, but I don't think it's really relevant right now. I think in Season 2 this could, be, be, could become a nicer uh, artifact. Now, I do have mine maxed. I do Rally. I don't have my skill maxed, but I do have... Um, you know, this to level 40 and 4 star. It, it, it is nice when it comes to passes, being able to rally them. But again, I still feel like it's not the greatest artifact and not something that I would really want to pull. And the last one, Kingslayer. Again, this one's awesome and definitely would be amazing to pull. You've got a 600 rage cost to deal damage up to 5 enemies. Okay, for 1800 factor for level 1, if we go max... 3600 i mean that's a lot of damage they they uh take 15 percent less per additional target and that's fine you're still going to do a lot of damage but this one's just crazy if the target is has fewer than 10 percent units remaining they're immediately defeated so this can be just just awesome when you're on the battlefield you you get rage so quickly if you're attacking archers and mages that you can proctor this really fast and get back to your cooldown to do some massive damage with this and really wipe out some units. Sorlin's Blade is pretty similar to me. This one packs more of a punch because it's got more attack in it. But the Sorlin's Blade has the march speed, which makes it really nice for cavalry. Um, so while this is a great artifact and probably the best artifact for cavalry, um, I don't think it is by a lot. In fact, I don't even use this currently. I have the Sorlin's Blade that I'm using because I love that march speed. I did my talent tree into more damage. And so I needed that march speed buff. So I, I really like that one. It kind of complements the way that I'm marching right now. But Kingslayer is definitely a great choice. So if you were going to buy all the packs, you're going to get 93 keys. To guarantee yourself a pull, it could take you up to 270 keys. <clears throat> that is because there is a 90 pull kind of, you know, guarantee to get a legendary. Okay, it's called the pity timer. If you do the pity timer three times, <clears throat> you are guaranteed to get your legendary. I'm not saying it's going to take you 270 pulls. You could pull it three times in a row. But there is a chance it could take you 270 pulls. So unless you are going to buy this pack all three days, then you are probably going to have to use extra gems on this. Now, that's not a guarantee. You could pull it right away. Um, you could pull it the very first legendary on the very first pull and be there. You're not going to max it. So you're only going to have the base skill, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. If you are, you know, low spender and want to just kind of get this one and you really want it, um, go for it. For me, I just think that the Dragon Rift is good enough to be able to work with your tank march. Um, and if you don't need that HP bonus, then, you know, or you're not running Madeline, I wouldn't go for this one. I just don't think that there's enough in the other legendaries that are there to make me want to put in that effort. Um, so, you know, you make the decision if, if this is, you know, Madeline's your favorite, then by all means, this is a great, great pull for you. This is amazing synergy with Madeline. I think that it can do a lot of damage, especially if you are gonna go tanky tanky. If you are going to use your Madeline Maybe you're going to use Garwood, even if you use Nika, okay? It's a great pairing, but if you go into that tank tree, pair with Garwood, you can do some amazing, amazing stall tactics in the front, allow your DPS to just burn behind you, um, then by all means go for it. But if you are not going to use Madeline, um, or she's not, she's low, or she's not your primary, I would not pull in this one because I just think that the other things around it are going to be very disappointing. Um, but, you know, you make that decision for yourself. That's all I have for today. If you don't mind, please hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.